Hi everybody, this is Eugene O'Loughlin and welcome to my series of short how-to videos. In this video, we're going to learn how to perform a two-factor chi-square test for independence in R. So the two-factor uh, chi-square test for independence is a test that will um, ask, a, ask the question if two factors are independent from one another. So the best way for me to explain this to you is to take a look at a simple example. So I'm going to look at a diagram. This diagram is numbered um, 92. And this diagram plus all other diagrams, example files and R scripts used in this series of videos are available in my GitHub when you'll find a link to that in the information section beneath this video on the YouTube page. So if what I have here is a contingency table. This is what a two-factor uh, chi-square test is based on. And the example that I'm using here is a simple opinion poll uh, of made-up data here from by me of a random sample of 1,000 voters. We can see we have 400 males, 190 of them indicated they would vote left. 155 indicated they would vote centre, and 55 indicated they would vote right for a total of 400. We have a total of 600 fem uh, females, and they were voting 240 for left, 290 for centre, and 70 for right-wing parties. And so we can see here from this contingency table that we have two factors. The first factor is called gender, and we've got male and females are the titles there, and these are the observed figures, okay, uh, as a result of my opinion poll. And the second factor then is voting preference, whether they're going to vote for left, centre or right wing parties. So I want to ask the question, do men's, is there a difference between the factors here? Do men's voting preferences differ significantly from women's voting preferences? So these two factors here allow us to conduct a chi-square test for independence. So are these, is voting preference independent of gender? Let's go back to my code here. And so what I want to do is start to, bi to build up the table that I'm going to use. So if I look quickly back at the diagram, what I want to do is I want to recreate this table here in the center. I don't want the row total or the column total, just these six numbers. And then I'm going to add in the column names and the row names. So let's go ahead and do that. So to do this, first of all, I want to create a, a vector called poll, poll data and use the as.table function to put a table together. So there's a few elements to this, so it takes a little bit of time. Uh, I'm going to um, use the rbind function to bind my two rows together. So rbind, I'm going to use this to combine, first of all, the values for males, 190, 155, and 55. And then after that, use the combine operator to add in the female data, 240, 290, and 70. Okay, watch out for all the brackets in this here. It can be very easy to get confused. Our studio is pretty good at putting up the two when you, when you do them, but it's easy to delete them. Always do a quick check. This looks okay to me, so let me run this. And let me display poll data here. So print it out. Click on Run. And we can see we've got our table recreated, but we don't have row names and we don't have column names. R has just given them the letters A, B, and C. So let's go ahead now and add in the row names and column names. I'm going to use, first of all, the dim names function to do this. So I'm going to give my table uh, dimensions uh, some names. So the table is called poll data. I'm going to assign that using the assignment operator. And I'm going to use the list function to put the names uh, for, of male and female and the, and the voting preferences together. So the first thing is in my list is I'm going to call gender is equal to, and again, you need to use the combine operator because I have two words here, inverted commas, male, and after that, comma, female. Again, do a quick check for all your brackets to make sure everything is matching up. Looks good so far. So in between the two last brackets here, I'm gonna put in a comma and move down to the next line. And this time the parameter I'm going to use is treatment is equal to, uh, in this case here, the three uh, voting preferences combine uh, left bracket for the bracket uh, center again watching your inverted commas and right okay so uh, get, double check every, that everything is okay so what I'm doing here is I have created my table and I have displayed my table in the console and so what I'm doing is adding male and female to the row names and left center and right to the column names so let me run that now to see, check for errors and see if it's okay. And I'm going to copy down the print function just to save myself some typing. I'm going to display the contents of this table. 
and we can see now we have got the table uh, similar to the one we showed in the diagram a few moments ago. So now I'm ready to conduct the actual test itself. So I'm going to use a new variable called, I'm going to call this one pole chi or chi and use the chi square dot test function to uh, conduct the test. Now if you have not used this function before uh, do check it out in the help viewer in um, our studio and you'll find lots and lots of information about how this function works. If you haven't used it before it's always a good idea to look it up. And I'm going to just run this test on my poll data. So poll, poll data and store the result in a, a variable called poll chi. So let's, let's run this. Okay, um, no errors. I'm getting a value for poll data in my um, global environment and poll chi. And what I now need to do is display the contents of my poll chi. Print. chi let's run that and we're now getting the results of my chi squared test so so we can't use the uh, actual chi squared chi symbol in uh, R or our studio so uh, the output gives you a capital X but that represents a chi so the chi squared value is equal to 8 uh, so our chi squared statistic is 8.9261 we have two degrees of freedom because we've got uh, three groups uh, and our p-value is the important value here. Uh, the p-value is 0 0.01153. Now this is less than the alpha value we set at the beginning when we were uh, calling out our null and alternative hypothesis. Uh, therefore, we can reject this statement, okay, that the two factors are independent of each other in favor of the alternative that the two factors are not independent. So in other words, uh, voting preferences is affected by gender. So let's finish off by writing this up, just in a comment here. My chi, again, I can't use the symbol. I've got two degrees of freedom, as we can see in our output on the console. Two degrees of freedom. Chi is equal to uh, 8.92, 926, comma, and our p-value is equal to 0. 0, 1, 2, uh, rounded. We could also say instead here that the p-value is less than 0 0.05, but when you have the precise value, it's, it's usual that you should report that. So this is the result of our chi-square test. We have found uh, that um, po polling preferences, between difference between male and female is significant. So that's how you perform a chi-square test, two factors uh, in R. I hope you found this video useful. Thank you for your attention.